What's up, everybody? Welcome to the View from Jamestown podcast edition. This is episode 19. This is our January 2019 recording, our, our first recording of 2019. Good morning, guys. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year. You guys have a good New Year's? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Lots of butter and alcohol. Butter and alcohol? Yeah, butter, fat, you know, <laughs> shrimp, steak, you know, all sorts of, you know, good eating stuff, you know. Newest drink mixer of 2019, al- uh, butter. Yeah, you know, a little, a little vodka, vodka and butter. butter. You haven't tried that yet? It's an, it's All the kids are trying that stuff now. But, butter martini shaken, not stirred. <laughs> That'll make your health, health program in 2019 easier because yeah, once you yeah. pile on a bunch of weight, it's easier to lose it when uh, That's 2019 right. comes. You I like gotta, it. You got to get chunky so you can uh, really impress the, the health improvement program. Um, so yeah, busy, busy starts of 2019, obviously lots, lots going on, lots, I guess, carrying over from 2018 into 2019 with various issues and, and geopolitical tension kind of within the U.S. as well as globally for that matter. Um, so what are some of the big things we're, we're seeing coming into 2019 as we're really getting the swing of things? I would call it a not busy start to 2019, that's, pretty yeah, that's much. That's one way it's, to put it, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's too much confusion, there's too much going on uh, right now. Uh, geopolitically, uh, the government shut down the stock market. Um, you know, our fearless leader is uh, is really sent us into a spiral here, and uh, and there seems to be no end in sight as we sit here today. Yeah, obviously, we're entering day thirteen of the government shutdown, which yep, is the garbage is piling up at all the national parks. The yep. uh, you know EPA is shut down. The IRS is shut down. The, um, you know, there's, there's things that are starting to, to get uh, pretty serious as we're heading to the two week mark. And of course, if you followed our old podcast and the, the kind of three piece tariff series you did with Matt Francoeur, Jan one was supposed to be the 25% tariff date, which obviously has not happened. It got pushed out. I think it's March 1st, March 1st That's for the additional 15%. We're still under the 10% tariff, um, on any imports from just about any imports that we deal with from China, not any imports, but, uh, and we've seen some retribution on the China side, quite a bit of that. A lot of it that, that goes, uh, uh, without a lot of, um, discussion on the news media and whatnot. So, um, it's a, it's a very, uh, serious issue and a declining situation. And obviously it'd be better for the situation to be alleviated overall, but the fact that it got pushed off a little bit will save a little bit of money with the tariffs not coming into effect. I know we've put a couple more loads on on certain products since we have the extra extra time to get more material in. Yeah, luckily we had uh, we had one load that was delayed to come in. Uh, it was supposed to come in uh, December 20th, and then it got delayed, delayed to Jan, Jan 2. So um, luckily those tariffs got pushed out or else we would have got stung on, on that load. Um, but that's just one small yeah small uh, example out yeah of we're that, cutting uh, close on that one and i'm sure there's a lot of other companies that and probably people listening that deal with this on a much bigger scale so i'm sure much much more impact for certain companies versus you know we're, we're probably a, a small microcosm of everyone yeah, i mean something. and even absolutely since the 10 percent tariff is in place there's it's still the lowest cost for many things so yep. people are still ordering from china despite uh 10 percent and even in light of a 25 percent tariff uh Again, it might be still the lowest cost in the world. Or the only option with stuff like Dicey. I mean, you, right. you got no other options. Yep, yep. And it doesn't seem, uh, out of the list of things that were supposed to happen, you know, for that 25 or the extra 15% not to go into place, it doesn't seem like any of that is happening or, or being talked about right now. So I'm, it's looking like it's probably, the other 15 is probably going to come into effect, I'd imagine, if things continue. <laughs> it's safe quo. assumption, yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, some of the articles talk about you know shakedowns at borders and and americans being uh you know um arrested and brought into custody and you know the things that that we talked a little bit of this morning in our our staff meeting is that you know when america does something it's a big you know announcement and everybody knows about it when china does things they sort of do it on the more local scale and just start messing with people and uh shipments arrive and are turned around because of a quality issue that comes up so um china doesn't use twitter like we do (laughs) no (laughs) they're a lot smarter than we are when it comes to that stuff i think so um so they are there is a lot going on um that you don't hear about and i i would really uh you know tell people to pay attention yeah and one of the big other topics we talked about in the last one more on the logistics front was the rhine river issues Mm -hmm. i think we did the first the December podcast recording early December and it was still pretty rough. And I think about a week after that, they actually got some rainfall. So it eased a little bit. Um, it's obviously still something to keep an eye on. I think it's 
somewhat normal at this point, but I think yeah. from from things I've heard that um, they're they're going to need about 120 percent of normal quote unquote normal rainfall to get back to fully normal by the springtime. So obviously the, that's a lot not, of rain. We're not out of the water yet, for lack of <laughs> better analogies. <laughs> And there's still a big backlog with a lot of producers there, not able to, you know, to, to keep up with, with all the demand that's, that's been happening while they've been down, you know, so that's going to take a while to get to normalize and get back to regular levels. Yeah, the uh, European market has, um, you know, demand that hasn't been satisfied, so there's pent-up demand there, and, and um, I, I know a lot of our producing partners in Europe are doing their best to fulfill that demand in Europe and prioritizing that as much as they can, you know, and... The good producing partners are still sending rateable volumes our way, um, but um, the prices are higher in the EU. Um, the demand is there, and they don't have the cost to get it across the pond. Yeah, it's a difficult thing to think about. The, the plant is fine. The plant itself is fine. They theoretically could be producing material, but you can't get raw materials in or finished goods out, so it right. puts you in a tough spot. Um, and so I guess leading right into some January pricing, uh, things that seems like things are still going down for the most part overall um, across the board for a variety of different reasons that, mm. that seem accurate. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, you've seen the erosion of uh, Brent and WTI crude, um, you know, in a, in a sort of a global glut of oil, and that certainly has its uh, effects on the uh, oil derivatives that, that affect our chemical um, prices. So overall, um, you know, in our, our products, you're seeing downward pressure um, due to raw materials, yet supply and demand fundamentals, as we just discussed, still kick in on a lot of the stuff that we sell. It's just not enough of it available for the demand that's there. Yeah, I think you mentioned last time, AJ, the seasonal products also going down. People are like, are you sure about that? Yeah, I mean, especially me methanol, you know, trending in a downward mm -hmm. trend through December, January. That's I've never seen it in my time in the industry. This is a, a first for me, you know. So, um, yeah, a lot of those, the, a lot of the seasonal seasonal increases just aren't aren't happening this year yet. Well, you also see the fact that we've got all of these methanol plants that were built in the USA for China. So, you know, you know, if we can't send products to China, then we've got a glut. They got to find a home somewhere else. Yep. And um, surprisingly, they're still talking about more methanol projects uh, in the U.S. Um, and uh, a lot of it hedges on where we go with this whole uh, trade war that's going on with China. And, you know, whether it's methanol or the plastics that we make here in the U.S., there's billions and billions of dollars hedging on this, you know, trade war getting smoothed out. Yeah, we did a little price comparison for this uh, this episode versus our very first one. So our, our first overall podcast was March of 2018. So mm -hmm. we're getting close to a year, but not quite a year. Um, but looking at things like benzene, our, our March 2018 podcast had benzene at $3.06. This month we're looking at $1.76. So that's Phew. about 50%. Yeah, it's, you know, I think the only thing that's actually gone up since then is natural gas. Surprisingly, yeah. So know, March March twenty eighteen, that gas was two seventy, and then this month we got it at two ninety five. Um, Which it, it was recently up as high as four seventy to four ninety or something like that. Yeah, it, it was, was up, up there. there. It was it went way up. <clears throat> Surprisingly, uh, you know, with the amount of fracking going on, I guess maybe the reason behind that is uh, we had a very early winter onset, um, and that with forty sub forty four forty eight dollar a barrel oil. You know, is fracking still um, an affordable method of extracting oil uh, from the ground? And is it, is it, you know, it was always the, the $60 threshold was there, and then it went lower with new technology. So what is that threshold, I think, is a key question. Yeah, and the stock market, obviously, something else that has brought a lot of news on recently. Um, January 2018, the NASDAQ was at just over 7,000, um, finished December at 6,600, so down 400 points or so for the year. Uh, the Dow, January 2018, 25,075, uh, and then finished December at 23,000, so down 1,800 points or so. Uh, so obviously both those down big in December specifically and uh, overall through the year finished a bit down. Yeah, we could. We were saying in most of our podcasts that this wasn't sustainable. It, you know, it was just a, sort of a, a market frenzy, if you will. And and you know, and 
you know, it actually happened later than I probably suspected it would that we go into this bear market and, and uh, see the uh, overall indexes moving lower. Um, typically, you see um, a bear market before a recession. So hopefully, um, somebody intervenes here and helps us out, maybe um, stop uh, raising interest rates, um, maybe some some semblance here in this trade war, um, you know, less confusion, I think, is really overall what America needs and the world needs um, from America. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. It is a lot of just confusion. People don't know what's happening or yeah. what's going to happen or what anybody could say at any given time. Yeah, I think, but, you know, if you look back on, on these podcasts, we've been pretty accurate in forecasting. We've been talking about things like, okay, well, the electronic logging devices are coming up. You're going to have a problem with trucking. Well, there was a lot of problems with <laughs> trucking. I mean, you know, these are the things that are available in the news, you know, um, forewarned. And a lot of people just simply don't pay attention to it, which is shocking to me. The, the, the Harris, for example, people were, uh, AJ came back from a fertilizer conference, said people are just putting cargos on the water like nothing's going on. It's like, come on, people. You know, this is real. And I think it's been a real learning experience for a lot of us in the industry this year um, to, you know, see these things coming and actually see the, the, the fallout from it and how great the fallout was was um pretty incredible you know and the info's out there you know we obviously try to do a good job of giving info out and talking about things we're seeing but it's not like we're experts or have this proprietary info we're just no passing info along we're just average joes passing the info along yeah. you know that's all we are but it's uh you know a little bit um we've been a little bit lucky in some of the calls we made but uh you know, overall, the info is out there and uh, everybody should be aware of it and they should be listening to this podcast. <laughs> it's a good, uh, good little promo in there. I like <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Um, and I think on the, on the trucking front for one second, too, I know we got that email from, I think it was Steve, put the email out that it seems mm. like trucking is getting a little bit better. Truckers are, the retention rate, I think, is going up. So truckers are staying with companies longer, which is a good thing. And I think something we expected to hopefully see based on the some of the salaries and bonuses and numbers and stuff like that. We've seen companies offering drivers to, to retain drivers. So hopefully that continues to improve a little bit in 2019. It sounds about right on the macro level. On the micro level, we're seeing it. We're, we're seeing better availability. The prices haven't come down, but the availability is there. And they're not going up, which I guess is a good thing. They're not going up. So, um, But better availability means that there's um, a relative slowdown overall in demand. So uh, good and bad in that. And I just I pulled up my Yahoo real quick, too. It looks like both the S&P and Dow are up 2% today. So okay, off, well, that's off good. to a better start for this Friday. It's a little confusing, right? A little, it's a, a little confusing. Down 2% yesterday, up 2% today. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll see, see where it closes. That's the you know, the thing, that, the thing that we're learning through this process, too, is that a lot of this trading is done by robots now. So this isn't real life like as much as it used to be. This is robots that are you know predicting and taking advantage and trying to make money based on what happened at 9 30 when the market opens you know it's like i you know so this is a whole new level of robots involved in our financial system and i don't think it's directly reflective of exactly what's going on i remember taking college finance classes and you try to ask the professor you know how's the stock market work how do i make money how does how does this all work and they more or less they try to give an answer and it's just something out of a textbook but it's more just like they almost shrug their shoulders it's like it <laughs> kind of goes up kind of goes down roughly follow certain trends but other than that mm -hmm. people people don't know why it goes up or down it's amazing yeah and, and it's even further when you throw robots in the mix i mean you yeah. used to see the floor of the stock market be full of people holding papers and buying and selling stocks now there's like six dudes there in front of computers <laughs> and they're like click you yeah. know and then they wait five they're really just there to be placeholders it's there's there's no need for for people um when it comes to this and so it's uh it's being driven by robots so you know uh, some good news and it's being driven by the news you know what's happening today oh there might be you know a shutdown solution oh the stock market goes crazy well the yeah. robots are you know they're piling on the orders and the stock market's going up and Tomorrow, oh, well, there's no end in sight with the China trade tariff thing. Boom, the thing goes down, you know. So it's, yep. this is this is new world for us. And it's a good good overview of everything going on that we're seeing coming into 2019. I think we'll obviously continue to 
talk about it throughout the year on these podcast episodes and obviously our view from Jamestown email newsletter. So all, Absolutely. all good stuff. Um, moving on, featured products, new products, not a ton of new stuff coming into 2019, at least to start the year, but a lot of um, featured products and, and big things for us. You want to run through a couple of those, AJ? Yeah. Um, top of the list, um, Urea. That's one of our oldest uh, oldest products, one of my favorite products. I'm the product manager. I love, <laughs> OG. I love, I love Urea. OG. So, um, I yeah, love, we, we should put them in a t-shirt. I, I heart Urea. I'll wear it. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> Urea socks, maybe. We were talking about having some socks. Oh, yeah, we're making uh, TCC socks per Kerry McNamara. I love it. I love socks. Who doesn't need I socks? I heard you're right. Socks. That's, that's, that's what's going to be. I'm going to write that down right now. Make sure they're comfy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I want good socks. High quality. Yeah, maybe. high quality. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, there's, you know, there is some seasonality. Obviously, well, that's some. There's a lot of seasonality to urea. Um, you know, it's, it's still used in some ice, ice melt applications, and we are getting into ag season, um, you know, a little early for ag season, being that it's, it's only winter, but folks are starting to plan their buys and uh, their formulations for the upcoming spring planting season. Um, I don't know. It's like 45 degrees outside. Maybe we'll just skip winter and go right to right to spring. Yeah, it was like 60 a few days ago. Yeah. So it's a uh, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I wouldn't okay. be mad about that. I want. I don't snow. mind this. I don't I mind want, this at all. I want the snow. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll help our methanol sales. It would. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice segue to methanol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> methanol sales, glycol sales. Um, those are also, you know, heavily used seasonal products. Glycols for for deicers and methanol, obviously for windshield wash fluid. Um, you know, up in the up in the northern parts of the of the U.S. Um, Elator CH is um, a newer one for us. We have um, we have uh, drums available for for prompt here in the states. Um, it's a newer one that, that we're growing and, and formulating um, in to replace uh, products like Dinch and other other plasticizers. Um, ethanolamine, so monoethanolamine, diethanolamine, triethanolamine. Um, we have those available in stock for prompt shipment. Um, again, a little bit newer products. I think we've mentioned those in the past couple podcasts but those are um you know ones that we're out promoting currently yeah one of the newer ones for us both the the elator and the triethanolamine so definitely trying to get the word out there and if there's any interest feel free to contact your tcc sales manager yeah it's interesting we have new products because in in tight markets like this it's not normal for producing partners to approach us to to move products into the market uh typically in longer markets we make arrangements to to move volumes into the Americas or, or where else we wherever else we operate throughout the world, so it's um, goes to show that uh, the train is moving down the tracks and, and people are still hopping aboard uh, despite tight markets overall. Ethanolamines, as AJ just men- mentioned, are in stock. These are products that have had significant price increases the last couple months. So um, you want to reach out to your TCC salesperson to talk about those um, because we do have some stock that we bought. Uh, quite a, you know, not quite a long time, but a few weeks ago. So maybe at a lower price, and we might be able to help you out with that. I, I also heard this morning that BASF is exiting the U.S. market on MEA specifically. Hmm. Um, so um, you know that may leave some users without without a, a source. So it could be a good thing to talk to talk to folks about. Absolutely. And for a limited time, you get a free pair. I heart urea socks for every urea order. <laughs> <laughs> comfy ones. Comfy, comfy ones. Yeah. Awesome. Um, upcoming trade shows, events, conferences. Obviously, it's a little bit quiet for the Christmas season and the, the holiday season, which was nice. But jumping right into 2019, a couple, uh, couple of good shows coming up uh, to, to start the year. Uh, we have the Specialty and Custom Chemicals America show down in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, for anyone that's been to the Charleston, South Carolina version, it's the same organizers, same style of event, same type of event, just a new location, um, some different focuses and, and some hopefully different exhibiting companies and things like that down there. Um, but we'll have a booth, uh, TCC booth 310. I'll have myself, uh, AJ, Corey Mullins, Steve Friedwald, uh, possibly Sean Harrington, and a couple of other people down there as well. So it should be a, a good show, a good event. I think we've all been happy with the Charleston show in, uh, in recent times. Yeah, the Charleston show has been great for us. And this, this being in Fort Worth, I think it's supposed to be more focused on the you know, oil field um, folks, the blenders and the formulators and that, and that type of thing. So this, this should give a new good angle to the, to the show. I, I expect it to be a good one for us. Yeah, I think I saw there was like four exhibiting spots left. So it's pretty impressive for a brand wow. new show that they got it you know, that sold out. 
Um, I know there's a waiting list for the Charleston show, but that's you know it's good that they have that kind of brand and can get it out there and sell out a, a second show in the first year. Yeah, yeah, they do a good job with it. They 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 have um they do the cocktail reception at night um, amongst the trade show booth, so it keeps everyone on the floor and you know keep everybody well fed and open bar people like that. So oh, yeah. um yeah, it's it's a, they, it's a good format. It's a good show. It's amazing our, our IPA manager Javi's not a not attending that one. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pick up one a little bit while he's not here, right? Um, and then obviously the AFPM coming up. Uh, we've started talking about it a little bit. Now that it's we're fully in January, it's definitely time to, to ramp that up. Uh, Rob, you want to talk about AFPM a little bit? Looking forward to it. Uh, you know, in a March, uh, it's always a nice time to be back in San Antonio, uh, get a break from the cold northeast, see all our friends, uh, partners, uh, have good meetings, and also have a we have a great cocktail reception uh, on typically on Sunday night. Um, yeah, it's Sunday the twenty fourth this year. And uh, you know everybody that attends AFPM is welcome to join us. Um, it's been a great event, um, well attended, and already uh, the RSVP list is double what it was in the past. So um, we're really looking forward to that and, and visiting with uh, all our friends and partners there. Yeah, this will be our third annual cocktail party. Uh, same location for anyone that's been in the past. Uh, so same same venue, same style of event. Obviously free to attend for anybody who's attending the AFPM. Uh, we just ask that you RSVP ahead of time. Um, so you've probably seen it in a couple emails, or if not, feel free to head to thechemco.com slash AFPM. All the RSVP details are, are right in there. It's nice and easy, and uh, just, just to get a head count for catering and, and things like that. You want to make sure we got enough food and drink for everyone, right? Yes. Not that it's been an issue in the past. I think we've had more than no, enough. No, more than past. enough. Um, we are also putting together a little golf outing. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit. It's our second annual golf outing at uh, at the AFPM. It's It'll be on the Saturday, um, March 23rd, just uh, before everything really kicks off. Um, yeah, so if um, you'd like to play with us, reach out and you know see if we can get you a spot. From From what I understand, you should bring a helmet. To these events because people have been hit by balls in the past or something. Yeah, maybe or... a hockey, uh, <laughs> yeah. a clear hockey man. <laughs> no, that wasn't at this golf event. Oh, that was a different. <laughs> no, that was, that was a, it was a close. Remember that one last it year? It was a close call. It was yeah. close last there year. There was a close. Yeah, you're right. Like right through yep. someone's cart. Nobody ended up in the hospital like the other event that I was thinking of. But yeah, there was a close call last year. <laughs> Who knew? Who would know about golf that would be that dangerous? Well, it's a, I mean, the course layout's kind of kind of wacky. It's like there's four holes and then you go. The, the course is called the quarry. So it's in a quarry. So there's yep. four holes in the quarry, and then there's like three holes coming back out of the quarry. So if you're on top and you shank one, you're going down into a bunch of people. Yeah. I mean, people must get hit all the time, I got to assume. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing if you're playing with pros, but you got all these guys like us just out there whacking balls. You know, something's going to happen. Yeah, not that we do, but a lot of guys consume um, quite a, a lot of beverages while they're playing. Stay, stay hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a helmet is a good idea. Yeah. I mean. Maybe. <laughs> So urea socks and TCC helmets. <laughs> it's, on the, it's on the list. Uh, but yeah, the, the AFPM is obviously a, a fantastic event. Um, feel free to contact your sales rep, or uh, if anybody knows Nicole Canning, feel free to reach out to Nicole. She spearheads the the schedule for the party, for things like the golf outing, as well as just meetings throughout the week. So if you want to set up a meeting, reach out to your sales contact or Nicole or pretty much anyone at TCC, and they'll they'll get you in the right hands to to get that set up for you. Wrapping things up, uh, some inside TCC news and, and news for the month coming up. We did some some charitable events uh, in December with Javier Fernandez at the MLK Center and a couple of local charities. So we were able to put together a, a pretty good um, giving package for a couple of different charities in, in December. Yeah, I thought it was great. The um, You know, no pressure, but uh, everybody at TCC was um, given an opportunity to give to the MLK Center uh, in Newport, which, um, you know, makes meals for, for homeless and people that are, um, you know, unable to feed themselves uh, well. And uh, and I think um, in total we had around um, $1,300, $1,400, something like that, that was donated by people from TCC. And, of course, TCC matched that dollar for dollar, so we were up above $2,500 for the MLK Center. We also had a uh, foundation that did some work with a sister company, uh, Kettlebottom, uh, doing a, a video to promote um, the Chris Collins Foundation. Um, it was, uh, it's a foundation that's founded to uh, help young people with um, dealing with depression and you know things uh, of that nature because uh, when you're young and if you have mental problems, it's 
something that you want to hold a secret. So it's really just to bring it out to get kids talking about mental health issues. And I think with the way the world is today with um, social media and you're not no longer just trying to be um, as cool as the coolest dude in school, you're trying to be as cool as the coolest dude on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. I think it's, it's really important to get kids talking more and looking less at screens. So I think that's a, a, what the Chris Collins Foundation is all about, and we're happy to support local foundations uh, that do such positive things. Yeah, it was nice that obviously with the monetary donations and then Javier and Angela, I believe, spending some time at the MLK Center with um, giving out gifts and things like that. It's obviously good to be able to give back with the local Yeah, we're community. happy to give them the time to, to time off at TCC to go over and give back to our community. I mean, it's, a, you know, TCC as a whole, I think one of the most proud things that I have in my career is, is how much we've been able to give back locally, globally, um, uh, you know, whether it's in service or in money. So um, it's a really nice thing. We got a lot of great people at TCC that do a lot of work to give back. So, thanks to Angela and Javier for doing that. Yeah, and on a, another, I guess, positive note at this point, I'm happy to welcome Ken Blanchard back. Uh, yeah, in a part-time capacity, but happy to have him back and good to see his name on emails and hear his voice again. He's working hard already. Yeah, he's uh, he suffered a major heart attack in Q4 and uh, has recovered. And I spoke to him just before this podcast, and he was coming back from. PT and they're working him hard and, and testing his heart and uh, it's great to have him back. Yeah, I think the last last piece of news are quarter four eight, uh, 2018 captain choice winners. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, if you want to make the, the big announcement, obviously. We have inside. Drum yeah, roll. <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> inside we have uh, Michaela Turnquist. Uh, she's uh, been with us about a year in accounting and, and um, you know, she comes out of uh, accounting at a, what do they call them the big four or yep. you know some one of the big fours and yep. uh we uh brought her on and uh, she's done an amazing job and she's a very positive happy person to be around at the office so uh well deserved uh by michaela and another local rhode islander too another yep from narragansett uh right across the bridge uh in rhode island and uh um very bright uh local individual and on the outside, we obviously, for anyone that's unfamiliar, we have the captain's choice every quarter, which, what's the best way to describe it as? Uh, employee of the well, quarter you, type of yeah, thing? Yeah, you get like, I think you get like a 50 or or $100 Amazon gift card. Everybody gets to vote, um, yep. you know, who the captain's choice is. And um, we have one winner from up in the office in Rhode Island and then one based from the outside sales staff. And the outside sales staff. Some of the inside sales staff would obviously be a part of that with myself, AJ, Javier, yep. you, Ben, as well. So, um but in this case, uh, for Q4 2018 was Kevin Canale. So he joined us after uh, retiring from uh, Invista uh, also maybe a year ago. Um, he's been doing an amazing job. He's very well known in the industry. And uh, he's brought a lot of uh, great new opportunities to TCC. So also very well deserved. Awesome. Anything else to wrap up uh, the episode? Anything coming up in January? Anything exciting? No. No, we're just going to get out there and sell uh, in, a, in a slower economy. You have to get out and see your customers and make sure they're happy uh, and, uh, you know, improve our customer service as, as, as much as our customer service is amazing. Uh, we're going to do our best to make sure orders arrive on time every time and that uh, people get um, the best service in the industry. So uh, now is the time to get out there and, uh, and make it happen. Yeah, it's a good month to... To plan, start to see some customers, and obviously jump back into trade shows and things like that in February and March. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Obviously, appreciate you listening. Um, hopefully, by now you're streaming on your podcast uh, channel of choice. But for full info, feel free to visit the slash podcast. Uh, has all our past episodes, best ways to stream it. Uh, you can obviously stream it on any device, any computer. Um, so wherever you're getting your music, getting your podcast, we're we're definitely there. So. Happy you're uh, joining us. We appreciate all you, the listeners, uh, whether you're on the audio format, on our new video format, courtesy of the Kettle Bottom guys over here. Um, definitely enjoy having these lights around, get a little tan while we're doing the recording. <laughs> it's nice. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.